Hey guys, um, today we're gonna look at a repair of the JBL uh, 12 inch flat subwoofer. Uh, this is the Club WS 1200 repair. Um, I acquired this and it had a, a blown voice coil, so pretty bad. It was locked up, um, which is just uh, a lot of a lot of power through the coil. Uh, will eventually cause the windings to fail, come apart, lock up inside of the motor. So. Um, I've kind of started this repair, but I figured I'd go ahead and document all of the steps that I took uh, for those of you out there that want to uh, take a chance and, uh, you know, uh, recycle what you have. Uh, they are repairable. Uh, contrary to popular beliefs, you don't have to throw them away. Uh, there's uh, plenty of parts out there. And so let's just get right to it. So uh, the first part um, that we want to do is... Uh, either take the dust cap off, which is right in the middle. In this particular case, these are one of the easier ones. So with a little bit of uh, a heat, just a heat gun, uh, again, without trying to risk burning up the plastic or the polypropylene that's on there. Um, we just heat it up a little bit and take our little uh, plastic accessory tool and we're easily able to remove the dust cap. So I've already got it removed, but I'll pull this off and kind of show you what that looks like. And as you can see, um, they just kind of uh, add that rubberized adhesive, whether it's RTV or silicone or, or something similar, E6000. Uh, so it doesn't really take a lot uh, to remove these dust caps. So uh, that would be the first step that really gets you to uh, see the overall damage uh, in here as far as voice coil and, and the motor if there's any sh issues now in this particular case I've already taken the voice coil out. So um, we'll just kind of go in the sequence The next step would be removing the overall foam surround um, To be able to remove the whole cone um, This was pretty easy as I've showed you before uh, With my other uh, woodworking tools surprisingly the chisel works the best the half inch I get right under the foam surround right here where it's supported, and again, it's held by that same rubberized material, silicone, RTV, E6000. Uh, they use quite a bit, but again, it's all silicon-based, um, but pretty good adhesive. And you pry carefully. Uh, the foam is pretty um, robust and solid. Um, sometimes there's more of the paper foam on these uh, different types of subwoofers, different brands, and they rip easily. This is really nice because um, I was able to pull it off with a little bit of force, just kind of making my way around it, and I wasn't really worried about tearing it. But again, always be careful. Um, once you lift that up, before you can pull it completely off, you would need to go in here and unsolder the tinsel leads. Uh, the tinsel leads are pretty straightforward. Uh, in fact, um, if I can focus, there is one of the voice coils. You just unsolder that, and it loosens up the tinsel leads, pull that out. We come to the other side and there's another lead, set of leads. As you can see, I've already desoldered it and just apply a little bit of heat on there carefully, pull those out and you should be good to go. Um, the, this club, WS1200, uh, it's got the proprietary Infinity, JBL, Harman, Dual, you know, and peanut selector switch, which I think is pretty neat. It just offers really good visit. Um, uh, flexibility when you're trying to wire up to an amp, whether you have one, two, three, four subwoofers. So this is pretty cool. So anyways, I uh, was able to solder, uh, solder and remove those tinsel leads. Once you have the foam surround, uh, it's uh, gonna expose everything on the bottom. And what you will see is now the spider being attached to the bottom frame. Again, the spider is also referred to as the suspension. And, uh, as you can see, making my way around is pretty clean. All the epoxy really came off or adhesive. Um, and to access to the bottom to the spider, uh, this was pretty tough. It was held on with uh, a really hard epoxy. So what I had to do was cut at the very edge of the spider and I'm gonna pull it off right here. And what you'll see is the edge of the spider itself where it's attached to the frame uh, it had really strong adhesive, so I couldn't really uh, pry it off and keep it intact. So what I did is cut as close as I can to the edge, uh, allow me some, some room so when I do put it back, I can add excess adhesive on there and I would be able to bond it to that remaining spider. 
So here's the spider, AKA the suspension, um, still in really good shape. And when I pulled this out, the voice scroll was still attached and it was pretty bad. Um, I've got that in the sitting in the trash right now. And so I pulled the voice coil out, cleaned up around the motor a little bit. It had a whole bunch of carbon deposit on there from the residue. Um, and next I am ready to really install the new uh, voice coil. Received one from Lord of Bass, very equivalent parameters. In fact, it's actually gonna be able to hold a lot, excuse me, be capable of a lot more power. Um, so with the right dimensions, I'll be able to go ahead and reinstall it. So the only prep work would be just to install I'm um, sorry, clean up the little area where it's going to mount. Uh, one of the important things that I show in my other videos is during every step, I urge you guys to document all measurements. Uh, it, this is going to be very helpful. So in my particular case, you know, as I'm taking things apart, um, I'm taking dimensions with my calipers of the yoke, which is this portion here. This is the motor. This is the uh, back plate. This is the yoke. That's the gap, right? So you want to be able to try to take measurements of everything, inner diameter, outer diameter of uh, the inner plate. Um, and that way you can always match it up. Uh, an important part, once the coil was on here as well, I was able to take the maximum dimension. So the outer diameter of the coil, inner diameter of the coil, the height where it was exposed. And I was able to document that. So here you see kind of the dimensions of the coil um again you know there's going to be a slight variance from each caliper to caliper but overall it's in the same ballpark they they are pretty uh somewhat standard but you know folks out there have quite a few of the accessories to replace them with and then the cone itself so you always want to look at the cone opening to understand what you can fit in there what you can't so i got these dimensions this helps me to go and find a replacement coil here is my replacement coil uh this came from lord of base uh, they do a great job of packaging and now I opted for a single uh, four ohm flat wound uh, coil. Um, again, this is going to be able to handle a lot more current than the factory. Um, and so I'm going to hardwire the subwoofer to only a four ohm impedance and I'm okay with that. Um, and that's the way it's going to be advertised for resale. So um, solid, um, it's a four layer uh, copper wound uh, aluminum on, on the car, uh, capped on former. So really robust. It's a great fit for this. And you can see here in the gap, I just gotta be a little careful. Once I put it on here, once I line it, it's gonna be a perfect fit for the gap. And the last thing I did with the coil is you can see this red line here. I marked um, a, a, a specific measurement where I, I outlined this red line. And what is this red line? When I took my measurements, uh, one of the important things is look at the height exposed. So when you look at the back of this assembly, um, the voice call was exposed all the way down from the base of the plastic here to a certain height. And, and I took that certain height to make sure when I do install it, I maintain the same parameters as a factory. Um, because this overall height of the coil is actually larger uh, than what needs to be hanging out there because that does impact this performance how far it travels and everything like that So to take the guesswork out of it. I just keep the same parameters as a factory um, The cool thing is, you know, you have a little bit of tolerance to play around with most of these dust caps They give you a little bit of area so that way the uh, voice top of the voice coil former can extend a little bit or, or come out You know a little bit low and it just covers up all the imperfections. So we're good there um, and in this sense, I think this is going to be a pretty straightforward job. So this is it. Um, again, prepping everything, cleaning out the outside, removing any debris. I did leave, uh, the previous, uh, voice coil wires as these are attached to the tinsel leads right here. And so I'll, I'll, I'll be able to leverage the same ones since there are two sets. I will go ahead and, uh, uh epoxy these in place. Uh, without having to use a uh, physical connection, which is fine. Um, and, and the reason I don't like to cut them off or anything like that, because it just balance. Uh, when the factory takes this in consideration, you know, they've got their uh, 3D programs or CAD programs, their uh, finite element, and they look at the weight distribution. So little weights can actually have an impact if 
if the cone is uh, is not balanced. So what I will do is I'll solder these back into place. I'll epoxy the two leads that aren't not being used. Just tack it on there so it's out of the way and it doesn't short against anything and just use uh, the two other wires that you see right here. Um, again, as usual, you wanna clean wherever you're gonna be putting new adhesive. This is already pretty pristine because it came off pretty smoothly, but again, I'll take uh, isopropyl or alcohol, rubbing alcohol, clean that off. Uh, I may just kind of take an abrasive uh, to add kind of a um, uh, an area that, that's prepped for the adhesive to hold on to. Usually if it's a smooth paint like this, adhesive may not hold the best. That's probably why this came off so easily. So what I'll do is I'll just take a little grinding wheel, maybe run it once or twice, add a little grooves in there so that epoxy or, or the silicone can seep in there and hold it a lot harder. Um, I did clean this off a little bit. I can clean it off more, but I think this has done a pretty good job. I don't like to mess too much with it. And before I do anything with the install, I'll take my air compressor, um, make sure there's no foreign object debris in there, FOD, uh, clean it all out, take Q-tips, uh, again, make sure you know, everything is prepped. It's nice and clean, it's ready to go. Uh, when I do add the spider, again, I'll add some black RTV all throughout here. I'll add some black RTV um, on the other edge, which will be here as well. Um, and then I'll carefully place it. And then once it's in there, I'll work my way under within the basket just to make sure it has a pretty good bond. Uh, once you get a pretty good bond, let's say even if it's only a bond of like a 70 to 80%, let it dry off and we'll come back with more beads and hold it in place. And this usually does the job. So even though the spider is the suspension for it, you know, it's only got so much travel. So I, I think we, this should be straightforward. And so we'll also adding the surround on here. Um, but I'll have uh, the next video. Um, so I'll get this all further cleaned up, prepped. Um, I'll get the voice coil installed in there. I'm going to be using some uh, uh, epoxy to hold the coil to um, the cone. Uh, you don't really want to use RTV here. There's a lot of different things that uh, the repair folks use. Uh, I love the five minute epoxy. It's freaking strong. It's going to hold. Uh, this is a pretty hard pressure point because this is what's going up and down consistently and holding the cone in place. So I'd like to use some really good adhesive in this, both from the top and from the bottom of this assembly. So once I put this in there, I'll take some good videos of it and show that to you. All right, stay tuned. Again, uh, there's an afterlife for these subwoofers just because uh, they get damaged. Now, some will, some, yeah. Not all of them can get repaired, but for the majority, uh, if you put your mind to it and a little bit of uh, TLC, uh, you can't get these up and running. All right. Thank you.